we continue to celebrate the birth of the Christ child with other Christians around the globe, we seek to bring God's light into the lives of those around us. As we bathe in the warmth and glow of this light, let us work together with God to mend our tattered world. We gather to once again hear the angels announce the good news of Jesus' birth, to ponder the wonder of Jesus as Mary did when she held her child, to glorify God as the shepherds did when they saw love lying in a manger, to remember that Jesus' love was an out-of-the-box kind of love. On that first Christmas, the prophets knew Jesus would grow to love without limits, caring for strangers and friends alike, instructing followers to love their neighbors. When Jesus said, love your neighbor, he meant everyone. His love was so profound that even from the very first day, the angels couldn't keep from singing. We've been singing along with the chorus of angels ever since. Glory. Hallelujah, Christ is born. Our opening hymn, Voices uni United, number 36, Angels from the Realms of Glory. <laughs>
us pray. Creator of the stars of night, Christmas may be over, but the celebration of all that Jesus means for us has just begun. Over 2,000 years ago, hope, peace, joy, and love came to light in the birth of the Christ child. By the fire of Jesus' spirit, hearts like ours have been warmed ever since. And still today, we pray that love burns strong within us, such that friends and strangers find comfort and warmth by its glow. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, everyone, and welcome to West Plains Online Worship for the first Sunday of the season of Christmas. Blessings and best wishes for a very happy New Year. We have now sadly entered a fourth wave, and we continue to pray for those within our West Plains family who cope on our behalf with the ill effects of COVID-19. And so I invite you to continue to remember Margo and Emma, Lynn, Andrew, Diane, and Tara. The service today is offered in recognition and support of the United Church of Canada's Mission and Service Fund. We continue, of course, to be grateful for all of your gifts to the Mission and Ministry of West Plains and to the MNS Fund over the past calendar year. If you seek any further information about contributions or a range of other matters, please check our website at www.westplains.ca. In addition today to our wonderful musicians, my partner in worship leadership is Shelley Gaylard. Much gratitude, Shelley. Our next hymn, He is Born, Voices United Here Tonight.
us pray the prayer of illumination. Source of all wisdom and understanding, by your word you give wisdom to guide us on the path you set before us. Send your Holy Spirit to open our hearts and minds to receive your word and strengthen us to follow Jesus into the year that awaits us. Amen. The book of Proverbs includes wise sayings about what matters most in life. Think of the book's voice as an elder in your family, whispering a culmination of the most important things that they have learned in their life to you. In this short excerpt from the third chapter, verses 21 to 28, the writer speaks of wisdom and prudence and doing good when we have the power to do it. Listen to the Spirit speak to you through these wise words. My child, do not let these escape from your sight. Keep sound wisdom and prudence, and they will be life for your soul and adornment for your neck. Then you will walk on your way securely, and your foot will not stumble. If you sit down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden panic or of the storm that strikes the wicked. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Do not withhold good from those whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come again tomorrow, I will give it when you have it with you. Psalm 148 is all about praise. It's not just about how humanity praises God. It's about how God is praised through the cosmos. The first verses talk about how the angels, stars, and lights of the heavens praise God. Then the psalm focuses on how the earth, including the mountains, trees, and animals glorify God Finally, it concludes with us, God's people. From the highest heavens to earthly creatures, when God is present, creation sings, glory to be God on high. Sound familiar? You are right. The angels sang glory to God in the highest heaven. When Jesus was born, and just like the heavens proclaimed God in, in Psalm 148, in Matthew's account of Jesus' birth, a star leads seekers to the stable. The idea is that when God is present, every element of the cosmos offers praise. Let us read and sing together. Praise God from the heavens, give praise in the heights, give praise all you angels, praise God all you hosts, praise God sun and moon, give praise stars and lights, praise God farthest heavens and all waters beyond them. things praise the Holy One at whose command they were created, who established them for all time, setting bounds which cannot be passed. Praise God from the earth, great sea creatures and ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and frost, gales that obey God's decree. All mountains and hills, all fruit trees and cedars, wild animals and cattle, creatures winged and earthbound, the sovereigns who rule the earth and its people, all who govern and judge this world, young men and women alike, old people and children. Let all 
things praise the name of God, the name above every other, whose splendor covers heaven and earth. You give strength to your people, songs of praise to your faithful, to Israel, the people dear to you. Listen to the Christmas story from the Gospel of Luke, as though I'm reading it to you for the first time. You may even want to close your eyes and visualize the scene. Note the variety of ways characters in the story respond to the good news. Put yourself in their shoes. What would your response be? May God bless us with insight as we listen to a reading from one, from one sacred scripture. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what they had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered, pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. What do you typically do on Boxing Day? Fall into a turkey coma? Get the sails, tidy up the aftermath of company and presents. After the shepherds visited the Holy Family and shared what the angels had told them about Jesus, namely that he would bring good news of great joy, scripture says Mary treasured their words and pondered them in her heart. In other words, she grew quiet and reflective. On the other hand, the shepherds went on their way glorifying and praising God. Treasure. Ponder. Glorify. Praise. All appropriate responses to receiving profound news. In Matthew's Gospel, the Magi arrive on the scene offering gifts. Their response to hearing the news of Jesus' birth is to offer a gift that symbolizes who Jesus was and what he would become. Boxing Day is a good day for treasuring the Christmas story and pondering the call it places on us. It is a good day for glorifying and praising. It's a great day to contemplate generosity. As I'll explain after we sing, Boxing Day was originally a day to give. In fact, it's Shelley who's going to explain that. Um, our next hymn is a verse of In the Bleak Midwinter, number 55, verse 4.
before Boxing Day came to be associated with turkey sandwiches, football, and discounts, it was known as a day to serve those who are poor. There are various theories about how Boxing Day came to be. One theory suggests it came from the practice of giving Christmas boxes to servants, along with a day off following Christmas. Another theory suggests that the tradition came from a custom in the late Roman early Christian era, where alms boxes placed in churches were given to those who were living in poverty. On the feast of, feast of Saint Stephen, a Christian martyr known for charitable acts. Incidentally, the feast of Saint Stephen falls on the second day of Christmas tide, and in some churches, Stephen is celebrated today. Regardless of which historical thread you follow, Boxing Day was always meant to be for contemplation and generosity. This morning, this afternoon, I would invite you to align yourselves with the roots of this day, a day that calls us to compassion. Christ, the greatest gift of all, was born for all. He made that clear in the life he would grow up to lead. In his life, he fulfilled the angel's promise that he would bring good news of great joy for all people. Notice the scripture does not say some of the people, it says all of the people. Just because someone lives next to us doesn't mean we should care more for them than we do someone who lives a block, a city, or a country away. God calls us to love our neighbor as ourselves. When Jesus was asked who our neighbor is, he essentially said, everyone. Our collective United Church Mission and Service strives to accomplish three things to help transform and save lives, inspire meaning and purpose, and build a better world. As Christ followers, we aren't only interested in how our neighbors are living and how they're doing down the street. We are called to care for the whole human family, including those living across Canada and around the world. As a United Church, we share our resources so we can have a bigger impact than any one of our churches could have alone. After we sing, Shelley will share David's story with you because it illustrates just how important it is that our generosity isn't constrained by artificial borders of geography or even judgment.
If anyone needs to hear great glad tidings, it's people like David who experience Christmas as one of the loneliest times of year. Ten years ago, my wife and I were living our dream, running a successful catering business in Vancouver. But that was before a drunk driver took my wife's life, says David. And that was just the beginning. The heartbreak was still fresh for me when six weeks later, a work accident claimed the life of my 23-year-old son. In the blink of an eye, he was gone. A few months later, I got a call that my daughter's car had veered from the road. By the time she was found, she'd frozen to death. In five months, David's entire family was gone, and he turned to substances to numb the pain. My rock bottom came when I was arrested for carrying drugs. In jail, I had a lot of time to think about the man I wanted to become. I knew I needed to make some huge changes if I wanted to be happy again and become the man my beloved wife and kids knew me to be, he says. The Bissell Centre, supported through your mission and service gifts, was the first place David went when he was released. The staff greeted me with kindness. Instead of judging me, they welcomed me and handed me a warm plate of food. The staff told me about their mental health and housing support programs, and I was blown away. For the first time, I realized that I didn't have to rebuild my life alone, he says. Your generosity through mission and service helps people like David start over. In their most painful hour, it is one of the ways you and I tell them that they matter to us and they matter to God. Is there any better gift than to let someone know they are valued and loved just as they are? Boxing Day. Do you fall into a turkey coma, hit the sails, tidy up the aftermath of company and presence? 
If you give to the United Church Mission and Service Fund, your generosity is restoring dignity, putting food on a table and a roof over a head, letting someone know they aren't alone, and providing education, agricultural training, and life-saving advocacy. For some, your generosity means a second chance at life. Through your gifts, you are bringing great joy. Treasure that thought today. Treasure knowing that you are making a difference on this day that has somehow morphed into becoming about getting a deal. You are giving the best gift of all, compassion. May God bless us with wisdom to appreciate all that we have and all that we have to give. Like Mary, the shepherds, the Magi, and Jesus himself, let's go into the new year treasuring, pondering, glorifying, praising, and giving. Let's take love out of any boxes we put her in. letter to the Colossian Church reminds us that whatever we do in word or deed, we do everything in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. May our offerings to West Plains, to the Mission and Service Fund, to the Compassion Society, or to Wesley Urban Ministries show our gratitude to God in Jesus' name.
to you, O God. Glory to you for all the ways that our offering supports the work of our church. Glory to you for all the ways these gifts extend care in our neighborhood. Glory to you for all the ways our support transforms and saves lives through mission and service. Glory to you, O God. Amen. I invite you to be seated. The pastoral prayer weaves together both silence and speech. And so let us join our hearts and minds in prayer. With the rush of Christmas just past and New Year's on the horizon, many of us would benefit from slowing down and listening for fresh ways Jesus inspires us to live generously. I invite you intentionally to pray in silence with me this morning, setting aside the hustle and bustle of the season to be attentive to the Spirit. And so let us pray. Loving God, on this day that has become so much about buying and getting deals, we ask that you turn our attention to gratitude and generosity. Gratitude for what we already have and generosity to give what we can. Quiet us now to open our hearts to you. In the silence of our hearts, we open ourselves to listen for one way you are calling us to of our time this week. In the silence of our hearts, we open ourselves to listen for one way that you are calling us to share our talent or ability this week. In the silence of our hearts, we open ourselves to listen for one way that you are calling us to be generous with what we have this week. God, inspire us to live generously, not boxing in what we have to offer, but sharing it with our family friends and neighbors at home and around the world. When we are tempted to limit love, open our hearts and minds, stir our hearts to care deeply, to live compassionately, to impress the world with love. In the way of the one who taught us what it means to love our neighbor, we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It came upon a midnight clear. <laughs>
nothing boxed in Jesus' love, not rules, not borders, not petty disagreements. We too are called to let love break loose in and through our lives. As we close the service of worship, may God bless us to live with a caring and daring love, one that not only knows it is better to give than to receive, but also it's in giving that we do receive. May God, who is our creator, and Jesus, our redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our sustainer, bless us to live generously today and in all the days to come.